What's going on guys? Derek here from Wilson Audio Labs. Today we're going to talk about the JL Audio HD 900 slash 5. But before we get to the amplifier test, I want to talk about two terms. We're going to do some schooling today. We're going to talk about bespoke and cookie cutter. You guys probably know where I'm going with this, but I'm going to take you down the road. First, bespoke. According to dictionary.com, it is made to individual order or custom made or what I like to call unique. That's right. I add my own little definition here. And when I think of car audio amplifiers that are bespoke, I think of two categories, boutique and mainstream. For the boutique, I think of brands like Linear Power, True Technology, Demore Engineering, who has $8,400 amplifiers here that are just drill worthy. And then we have the mainstream brands, such as Audio Control. We have Kicker, who designs all their amplifiers themselves. Rockford Fosgate does the same. And of course, JL Audio. And that's who we're going to talk about today with this amplifier review and test. Now, the other type of amplifiers, the cookie cutter is what we call them. And according to dictionary.com, these are denoting something mass produced or lacking any distinguishing characteristics. Now, I'm not going to talk about any specific brands, but you guys know what I'm talking about. These Korean brands, Chinese knockoffs, things like this that are just mass produced, mass copied. And these are like a lot less expensive than the bespoke brands. And there's a reason because the price, yeah, the bespoke ones are big money because there's so much engineering time and effort going into them. The cookie cutters are just copies of other amps, so they don't cost as much. The JL Audio HD 900 slash 5 that we're talking about today has a retail price of $1,249. And a lot of people are going to say, wow, that's way too expensive. And I just explained why. So let's move into the amp itself. This is a used HD 900 slash 5. As far as the power ratings, it's a five channel amp rated at 100 times 4 plus 500 times 1. Now what's really unique about this amp is it does the same power. It's rated the same power everywhere from 12 volts all the way up to 14 and a half volts. So that can be very useful depending on your situation. Other specs include frequency response, 12 Hertz to 28 kilohertz, high signal to noise ratio, high damping factor, and also requires an inline fuse of 60 amp, which is not included. As far as dimensions go, it's about the size of a sheet of paper, 8.29 inches by 10.74 inches, and for the height, 1.93 inches. We'll take a look at one end of the amplifier here, which has the controls for adjustments on the amplifier as well as some status lights. On the far left, you'll see a status LED for power and protect. You'll also see a switch for an infrasonic filter, either off or 30 hertz, input sensitivity and filter frequency for the subwoofer channel, as well as the low pass filter off 12 dB or 24 dB. Then for the rear channels, we have a sensitivity adjustment, frequency adjustment, as well as another filter, this one for high pass. And the front channel is the same, it has input sensitivity, filter adjustment, high pass filter switch. And on the far right, we also have the switch for two channel, four channel, six channel inputs, as well as low or high voltage input. On the opposite side, you'll see some connections uh, as well as RCA inputs. Now the power connection there for 12 volt ground and remote is via a plug, which I'll show in a minute. Then you can see the RCA inputs, there's six of them. And these are panel mount, also known as Tiffany style, which are the nice high quality style. Then there's a remote level control as well as the subwoofer output, the front and rear speaker outputs. Now all the connections on the amplifier as far as the power and the speakers are made via these terminal blocks which are pluggable into the amplifier. You'll see here I lift one of them up so you can see what it looks like. It has the Allen keys on the bottom for tightening down the speaker wires and then it has these little pole female size that fit onto the male of the amplifier and they stay in nice and tight. Now that's good and it can be bad though when you try to pull them out because they can be really really tight in the amplifier. Understand why they need to do that but you just need to be aware that you might have to get your He-Man hands going on to pull it out. You big dummy. Now we'll pull off the top panel here and show you guys what the guts look like. Can you say psych? We're going to do that after the amp dyno test. So make sure you stay tuned to see what the internals of this bad boy look like. Now let's fire up the good old SMD to more engineering amplifier dyno so we can do the power output test. But before we do that, 
smash me a thumbs up and check the link in the video description to buy you some Wilson audio merch. Now, first up here, we're going to test the four channel mode and we have the channels bridge. We do this for simplistic test. Eight ohms bridge is rated 200 watts by two, which equates to four ohms, 100 watts by four. And I'll help you with that math when we get to that point. So here we go, eight ohms bridged. See if we get that 200 by two, yes. 208 and 206, notice the voltage is low. I did this on purpose, right at 13 volts. So uh, it does its rated power plus more at that lower voltage as it promises. As far as uncertified, we'll take it up to clipping. All the tests here on the four channel mode is at one kilohertz. 212 and 208, right at 13 volts. Then we'll adjust the dyno for the dynamic test. Now what you'll notice is this amplifier uses a regulated power supply so we do not see those really large dynamic numbers that you sometimes see on an unregulated amplifier. So it's not much difference here, 213 and 208 versus what you saw for the other test. Now efficiency, this amp, it kicks butt. 86% efficiency, and that includes the sub-channel, which we'll show later. Now let's bridge the amp for four ohms on the front channels, rated 150 by two, anywhere from 12 volts up to 14 and a half. Here we go, and you can see we got quite a bit more. 255 and 268 at 13.34. Again, the voltage was low, just to show you the amp can do its rated power at a lower voltage. Uncertified takes us up to the clipping point. And let's see what we get here. 238, 231 at 13.3 volts. So that's nice power. If you take the four channel version of that, it's about 115, 120 watts per channel. So that's good, better than rated power. Dynamic, again, you're not seeing big dynamic numbers here because of the power supply design. There are always trade-offs, right? You're getting good power at lower voltage with a regulated power supply, but you're not getting these massive dynamic numbers. Now efficiency, again, excellent. 82.3%, this is with all channels loaded. All right, now let's check out the sub-channel, test it out. Again, we have all the other channels loaded on resistors, rated 500 watts, everywhere from 12.5 to 14.4 volts. First up, we will try the certified test up to 1% THD, 539 watts, right at that 14.4 number. So that's good, it did its rated power plus a little more. Let's take it up to the clipping point and the uncertified test. See if we get a little bit more power than we got on the previous test, and yes, we do. 569 watts at 14.36. Now, Ninja Skills readjust the giant dyno, can't even talk, <laughs> for the dynamic test. It does, uh, you know, almost 600 watts, 589, 14.36. Ooh, it jumped, 594. So there you have it. There's the power there. It looks pretty good. Now, two ohms on the sub-channel. Again, this amp has this unique design, so it's rated the same. It's rated 500 watts at two ohms as well. But as you can see here, we got quite a bit more, almost 800 watts at two ohms, 14.34 volts. So that's good power over rated power by quite a bit. Uncertified takes us up to the clipping point. And over 800 watts, 814 at 14.32. And finally, we'll rewire the dyno here via the buttons pressed at light speed. Check out the dynamic power on the amplifier. And what's interesting here is, uh, yeah, it gets less. And again, this is due to the power supply design. This regulated power supply clamps down on the power and uh, it has its... Uh, pros and cons. Unfortunately, the con here is we don't get as much dynamically. Now, the amp is rated down to 1.5 ohms on the sub-channel. I don't have that mode on the dyno. I do have a 1.3 and a 1.6. I decided to go for the 1.3 test. As you can see here, 712 watts at 14.38. Again, well above that 500 watt rating on the sub-channel. Let's try it dynamically and see if we get that same adverse effect and you can see yes it does less power dynamically again due to the regulated power supply 
Next up, we'll check out the results. You saw all the tests there pretty much. We just pretty much say rated plus some. You can look at the four channel mode there. It did 200 watts at eight ohms, 250-ish or so at four ohms. So it did its rate of power plus. On the sub channel, 540, 800, 712. Good numbers across the whole spectrum. Next up, you guys are probably wondering what's inside this little amplifier the size of a sheet of paper. I say it's packed like sardines and you'll see why. Take this top panel off here, which the amp has got uh, quite a few screws to get to it. It's well engineered. You can just tell by how it comes apart. You can see the one power transformer there as well as the circuit board. This amp has two circuit boards, one at the top, one at the bottom. The components are squished in between. And unfortunately, I could not get it all the way apart to show you all the different components on the inside, but just use your imagination. You can see the capacitors in there. You can see some of the resistors, uh, a lot of the other electronics inside. Now, the biggest question is, do it bump dough? All right, we have the JL Audio HD 900 slash five here on the test bench. And I've actually got it hooked up to a plethora of speakers. We have it hooked up to the Savard eight inch high Q subs. These are actually wired at one ohms, which is not recommended. I probably should have wired them at four, but it's uh, too much trouble for me to change it now. So we're leaving it at one. And I've got the ELAC bookshelf speakers, which are six ohm. And we have the four channels bridged down to two to run those. So let's, uh, let's try the middle of the Mazer Laser song, which I don't usually don't make it this far in my demos. So let's try it out and see how it sounds. Here's another demo song, Ari De Nero. Now let's talk about the things we liked, the good stuff. First off, compact size, five or three channel flexibility. Obviously made rated power plus some, has similar power between 12 and 15 volts, has 12 or 24 dB per octave crossovers, remote base capable, high efficiency. And we even had to do two pages here because it had so much cool stuff. Two, four, six channel input, Tiffany style RCAs, reliability, and the unique and bespoke design. Now things that could be better, the infrasonic filter is not variable, it's either on or off. The power and speaker plugs can be difficult to unplug. The base remote is extra cost, and of course the price is a little high. So overall, I really like the amp, it performed well, it's very small, fits pretty much anywhere, and it will power your whole system. For somebody who doesn't need an extreme base amplifier, you know, 500 watts, 700 watts on the sub channel is very good. Special thanks to Stuart, Travis, Jesus, Tomcat, John, Byron, Justin. This is Big D. I'm out of here. All right, guys. So I posted some teasers online on Facebook. But yeah, I have more five-channel amplifiers coming up. And next week is going to be this Audio Control LC 5.1300. It's hot off the press. And can't wait to show you guys this amp. Uh, it's an incredible amplifier, and you're going to be surprised, is all I can say. So save up your change so you can pick up one of these. 
Talk to you next week. Big D out.